Hello everybody, this is Ms. Mayorga. I'm going to go over part three of designing your uh, final game. Um, so most of you are following along with me and creating a platform jumper game as your final game for the semester and some of you are creating your own type of game but you can still follow some of the same components that we're doing for the platform jumper game. Up until this point um, you should have your uh, little sprite your little player moving around your screen and you should have the items and your platforms if you have them falling down the screen at least once okay if you don't have this or um, you're still working on this make sure you go back to part one and part two of the videos um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get into looping our items so let's go ahead and loop the items first we're going to go down to the very bottom and we're going to create um, a few functions. So the first function we're going to create is our set item function. We're going to tell the computer how we want to reset the item when we reset the item. Um, and we're creating a separate function for this because there are going to be two times when we reset the items. We're going to reset the items when it gets past the bottom and when the sprite touches this, the item. Today we're going to just focus on resetting it when it gets past the bottom. Okay, so let me go ahead and open that up, my function. And I'm gonna actually add a little comment to separate it out. And this is gonna be for looping. Looping, I can spell, looping items and platforms. Okay, so I need a function block, a big function block. And I'm gonna call this set item one. Set. Uh, set item one. If you called your item coin, then you can call it set coin, right? Or if you did um, flies or butterflies or food items, right? Whatever you called it. I called mine item one, so I'm calling it set item one. Now, when I want to reset, when I reset the item, I need to reset the X and the Y position, right? I think you can get away without having to reset the velocity because we already defined the velocity. Um, where are my items here? We defined the velocity here. So you don't need that block. Uh, I'm gonna test it out, we'll see if we do. So let's go ahead and do the X and the Y position. So resetting our item means we reset the X and we reset the Y position of item one. I called mine item one, so I'm calling this item one. item one. Now when I reset the position, these are going to be random positions. All right, so I'm going to look at my original code when I created my sprite, and it was random 25 to 375 for the x. You can go 0 to 400, that's fine. I'm just limiting it a little bit so it doesn't go all the way to the edge. Uh, and then negative 20 to negative 50 for the y. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. So negative 20, I mean 25 to 375, and negative 20, 25 to 375, negative 20 to negative 50. Okay. And then when I am, um, I'm going to repeat this process two more times because I have three items on my screen. I have my uh, two gold coins and my red coin. So it's item one, item two, item three. So I need to do this again two more times. You can copy paste the code so you don't have to do it all over, or you can just drag the blocks again up to you. All right. Um, I'm going to copy that. Now drag the blocks again. Set item X. Y. So this is going to be set item two, item two, random number. I'm just typing it. You can grab the block. 375, item two, random number. 
negative 20 to negative 30. Right. Like I said, you could also copy paste this by clicking, highlighting it, Command C or Control C, and then use your arrow key on your computer to move this little cursor. There's like this little black blinking dot line. You move it up and down. So I need to move it to the bottom right there and then Control V, Command B, and it'll paste it. And I just need to make sure I change the number here. Item three, oops, not 23, item three. Item three, item three. Okay, we created these functions that tell the computer how, when, when we reset the item, how it should reset it. If we haven't actually used the functions, do not call these functions in the draw loop. Do not call them here, otherwise you're, you're, you're going to see that your sprite just goes like this at the top. So do not call them there. Instead, we need one more function. And this function is going to be the loop items function. If you have coins, you can call it loop coins. If you have something else, you can call it loop whatever. All right, I'm calling it loop items. Loop items. Here is where we're going to call these functions. We're going to check if the y position of my item is past a specific point then set the item okay so if the y position is greater than i need my greater than symbol if the y position is greater than item one, oh no I item one, and i'm going to say if it's greater than about 415. you can play around with that number to see what works best i want my item to go off the screen and then reset so i'm going to say about 415. so if item one y position is greater than 415 then we need to call our function set item. call the function set item so it resets the item set item one this is where we are um, calling this function. Notice the little triangle disappeared because I called the function in here. I'm going to repeat the if, like my if statement process two more times for item two and item three. So I need two more if statements in the same function, right? I'm not creating another function. I'm just adding two more if statements because I have three items. So if you have three items, you should have three if statements. If you only have one item, then you only need one if statement. If item y greater than, I'm just repeating the process. Item one, no, item two greater than 415. Then I need to set item two. If item three, oh, I already have that. If item three y position is greater than 415 then i need to set that function set call the function set item three this is where we're using these functions right here if my y position goes past the specific point reset it and that's this is what it'll do when it resets so now the only function that we need to call inside of our draw loop is the loop items function My door is open, so you might hear people in the hallway. My desk is right next to the door. Okay. Oh, hello. One second. I was recording videos. Oh, yeah. Me. We got a team. We got a t shirt. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry for the video pause. My principal came in and we got t shirts for um, Teacher Appreciation Week. And uh, nice. It says it's in Southgate because we are in Southgate. All right. Anywho, where was I? Oh, yes. Um, we need to call this function. So we need to call uh, the function here. We created it, and this is the only function that we're going to call inside of our draw function. All right. So go up here, and we're going to click the little one. And I called it loop items 
And uh, let's see if it works because I, I did something a little bit different this time. So I want to see if it actually works or not. If it doesn't, then I know what the issue is. Okay. Um, I think only one of my items. I can't tell if they're all resetting. I don't think they're all resetting. This one resets. This one resets. I think one of them is not resetting. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to go back down. Set item one. Set item two. Set item three. Item one. Set item one. Oh, here it is. Item 2.y. Oops, I forgot that. There we go. So now they should all reset for sure. There goes the red one. There goes the gold one. Yeah, so it turns out I don't need, because previously I had added the velocity block here as well when we reset the items. And I'll add it just because that's what I did in class. Item 1, velocity y. I think um, I was using random number here. But as you can see, you don't need it because it's already defined when we created our sprite. But for consistency with my other periods, because I did this in class, I will do this. Item 2, random number, 2 to 6. And item 3... Random. Again, you don't need this, obviously, because you saw that it works. But because I did this with my other classes, I'm going to keep it in here just to be consistent. All right, so we got our loop items to work. The other thing that I'm going to have us do, and I hope I don't run out of time, is looping our um, platforms. Okay, so I'm going to call this loop platforms. If you have platforms. If you don't have platforms, then you're done. You're done. You just needed to loop your items. Okay, loop my platforms. I'm gonna, I have two platforms, so I need to check the Y position for two of them. So I'm going to need two if statements. If the Y position is greater than 415 for my platform. Greater than, greater than Y position. If the Y position is greater than platform 1. If it's greater than 415, platform 2, if it's greater than 415, right? If it's greater than 415, then I need to set the Y position back up somewhere at the top. So I just need to reset the Y position, right? Sprite that Y. Here, make sure you're using, oh no, never mind. Yeah, sprite that Y. So platform dot y set it maybe back up to negative 15 or negative 20. Mm, I'll keep it negative 15. It's fine. So if the honestly I think actually it was my platforms platform. Yeah it doesn't matter. Negative 15. I'll do negative 15. Same thing for platform two. I forgot to put the one here. This is only if you have platforms. Now if you have platforms that are moving left to right in the y uh, in the x direction make sure that you're using the dot x box same thing with your items if you have items going left to right instead make sure that you're using the dot x or uh, if you're having them move down make sure you're using velocity sorry if you're having them move left and right that would be velocity x right mine are all going down so i'm using dot y or velocity y okay so here I have my stuff for loop platforms. The last thing I need to do is call my function inside of my draw loop. So if the platform Y position goes past a certain point, then reset the Y, All right? So let's go ahead and call that function. Going back up to our draw function. Call the function loop platforms. And it should work. Yay, it's looping the platform. Okay, so up until this point, what you should have on your game, if you're, especially if you're doing the platform jumper game, is a sprite character that moves and items and platforms that are looping around.
right, if you have trouble, send me a message, and I'll see you in class. Goodbye, everybody.